Usually we have a good case to make for Arizona. They're always good offensively, but usually it's their defense that kind of lets them down. But I'll say this, it feels like their defense, or at least on paper, looks a little bit better this year. So do you think Arizona actually has a chance in March Madness to at least make a run? Maybe not win at all, um, yeah. but at least the defensive numbers are better this year. They're a top 15 defense. I didn't even know that. Yeah. It's really good. They, yeah, I, I was surprised when I heard that just now. I was going to say when I heard when I heard it recently. I did not hear that recently. I did not realize they were that good. I was surprised when I heard you just say that. I would never guessed that they were top 15 defensively because this is one of the best offenses in the country already. So mm -hmm. you pair that with a great defense. We know defense travels and that's one of the knocks on Houston. I think it was mid major Matt. He's going to appear with us in just about an hour here on the show. And I think I asked him about Houston and he said, yeah, I really like Houston. They play great defense, but they can have really off night scoring. They often don't score enough. And so Arizona might just be the elixir there, right? Where they do play great mm -hmm. defense, but also it's harder for them to have an off scoring night because they can be so explosive offensively. So look, they've just slowly crept up the polls are sitting at number five for a reason. So I like Zona a lot. It's also hard, I think, to clear your mind of preconceived notions about teams. Like I'm having yeah. this issue with Purdue where you see Purdue and all you think about is, oh, wonder which small team is going to upset them <laughs> in the first round. Uh, and that's not necessarily fair because last year they had really young guards and they didn't have a ton of experience. So it doesn't matter how good Zach Eady is. You have to have some facilitators that aren't going to wilt under the pressure when you're about to lose to one of those small schools. So maybe Purdue goes a, a bit deeper this year, but there's never any value on these type of teams. Like they are seven to one. They have the third shortest odds to win uh, the NCAA championship. So we'll see. Uh, what happens with Purdue and also with Arizona. I do think there's a team out West that makes a run. Maybe it is the Wildcats. I have to ask you about the mid-majors because you are mid-major Matt, as your Twitter handle suggests. So right now we have had some thrilling finishes in some of these conference tournaments. So catch us up to speed. If you're somebody at home who's not following the mid-majors, what are the teams that are trending in the right direction and teams you want to back come this March if they punch their ticket to March Madness? Well, I mean, obviously the, the Missouri Valley is always fascinating. Arch Madness is one mm -hmm. of those mid-major tournaments that used to get more exposure on TV, and then I guess, you know, t people started taking it off TV. So now it's not until Saturday, the semifinals, when it's on the CBS Sports Network. But, you know, I mean, we've talked about before, Indiana State takes the court tonight, uh, this afternoon at 1 o'clock, which is gorgeous for the East Coast people that you don't even have to really work. You could just watch basketball all <laughs> afternoon. They get Missouri State. I think Indiana State's first – problem game comes next if they get Belmont. I think a lot of mm -hmm. people like Belmont's offense. They don't play any defense whatsoever, so I think Indiana State should get past them. If Indiana State gets to the championship game, I think they should be good for an at-large, especially if Drake is their opponent. Uh, Drake is an interesting team. They got uh, the 10 seed Evansville tonight at 7 o'clock. Drake has a lot of veterans on their team, and they've played some close games against Indiana State, but it's always the Missouri Valley that has the interesting tournament during this first week when, when all the mid-majors or at least most of the mid-majors are playing uh, their conference tournaments. So, Matt, when you talk about Indiana State, and I remember you mentioning them a few weeks ago. You called them. You said, watch out for the Sycamores. They're very good. They've been hovering there around the top 25, had a little slump, and now they're back playing well again. What is another team besides Indiana State that you've been keeping an eye on, a mid-major team that you think, okay, come tournament time, watch out for these guys? Well, I think it's McNeese State, and no one no one watches Southland basketball. That could be my red flag: is that I watch Southland Conference basketball. Um, and but if you if you aren't paying attention, Will Wade, who probably shouldn't be coaching um, in the NCAA, you know, he's had his issues with the FBI and stuff like that. But he resurfaced, and he is in Lake Charles, Louisiana, with McNeese State, a team that has already won on the road at VCU. They won at UAB. They won at Michigan. Now, granted, beating Michigan is not exactly what it used to be, but this team 
team is really good. They're 28 and three. They're the number one seed in the Southlands. Now the problem for them is if they somehow lose in this conference, they're not going to probably make the NCAA tournament, but they're just so much better than everybody else in the conference that I really wouldn't really worry about it. But McNeese state is one of these teams that has players that aren't afraid of the spotlight. Uh, they're really good. They're a top 10, three point shooting team in the country. They play really good defense. Uh, so McNeese state is one of those teams that if they make the NCAA tournament, you should definitely watch out for them they'll probably be like a 12 or a 13 seed so jenks can i interest you in the milwaukee bucks you know what chelsea maybe you can is it overblown the whole doc rivers thing where he keeps losing in game sevens i know he has an nba title i get that but that was a while back and i don't have the record in front of me but we know we know the storyline that has followed him throughout his career he just can't get it done in a game seven so I think that's the one thing that maybe is holding them back. Maybe it's low-hanging fruit, but it's it's been a real issue. That would be my only reservation when it comes to the Bucs. I will say that the the early returns, of course, it takes a while to adjust. And when he first started with the Bucs, they weren't great at all. But you have to allow for an adjustment period when you bring in a new head coach, a new philosophy, a guy that's trying to do things differently, particularly on the defensive side of the court and he's done that so it's seven to one i think there's a lot of value there ultimately they have the talent this comes down to do you believe in doc rivers yeah and maybe if you want to play it a little bit safer you can just bet on the bucks to win the east even though the celtics are sitting there uh but when you look at the coaching matchup like joe mazula is not somebody who people are cowering in their boots over either from a coaching perspective, I know he's young. I know he certainly can get better, um, but I don't think Doc Rivers is going to be outclassed in that matchup. We've talked about the the Miami Heat before. Seemed to always turn it on in the postseason. Right now, they're twelve to one to win the East. I'm not sure if I'm going to buy in on them winning the finals, but twelve to one to win the East. If they even make it to the Eastern Conference Finals, there is a good chance that you can hedge on this bet and make yourself some guaranteed money. I think they're a matchup nightmare. It doesn't seem to matter who's playing in that lineup. Hashtag heat culture. This is a very tough team, which if we're gonna talk about coaching, Eric Spolstra, one of the best in the business. So heat, 12 to one to win the East. That's another one that's piquing my interest. I think that's fair. And I always, I don't know what it is about the heat, why I feel like they're criminally undervalued all the time. But you know what? That's good for us, right? Because if they're undervalued, yeah. then if you're a better and you want to put some money on Miami, I wouldn't fault you at all. And I always I always think coaching matters, which sounds like an obvious thing to say, but it really does when it comes to the postseason. We were just talking about Doc Rivers, right? He's had success, but there have been some failures as well. When you talk about Coach Spo, there's a reason why that he got an extension, what, two or three weeks ago because he is – long been one of the best coaches in the NBA and knows how to coach his team in the postseason. So when you have a proven head coach and you have a team that when healthy can compete with anyone, then I think that's a lot of value.